wind blowing that way, it should collapse. April 17, 2013. A massive ammonium nitrate explosion at a fertilizer storage and distribution facility devastated the town of West Texas. The blast killed at least 14 and caused hundreds of injuries. The destruction I personally saw in West, the obliteration of homes, schools, and businesses by an ammonium nitrate explosion was almost beyond imagination. You know, when horrible accidents like these occur, it's imperative that they're thoroughly and expeditiously investigated so we can all understand their causes and ensure that future incidents are prevented. Ammonium nitrate is a reactive chemical that can undergo potentially hazardous chemical reactions if not managed properly, such as violently detonating when exposed to heat, shock, or contamination with other materials. During the CSB's investigation, it discovered that the West Fertilizer Facility stored approximately 60 tons of ammonium nitrate fertilizer in combustible wooden storage bins inside a combustible wooden building, did not have a sprinkler system in case of fire, and was located very close to homes, schools, and hospitals. The CSB considers the West explosion to be among the most serious U.S. chemical incidents affecting the public in many decades. That's what they said. So this should be a wake-up call for all of us, and we must take steps to ensure that all such disasters never happen again. The CSB found that ammonium nitrate storage falls under a patchwork of U.S. standards and guidance, which do not prohibit nor discourage many of the conditions that likely contributed to the disaster in West Texas. The fertilizer industry tell us that U.S. sites commonly store ammonium nitrate still in wooden buildings and use wooden beans, even near home, schools, and other vulnerable facilities. This situation must be addressed. OSHA's explosive standard does not prohibit wooden bins or wooden building construction and does not require sprinklers unless more than 2,500 tons of ammonium nitrate is present. And ammonium nitrate is not one of the listed chemicals that triggers coverage under OSHA's process safety management standard. EPA's risk management rules covered the toxic anhydrous ammonia stored in tanks at the facility, but not the tons of potentially explosive ammonium nitrate. In 2002, the CSB issued a study on reactive hazards, such as uncontrolled chemical reactions, with significant increases in temperature or pressure. The board recommended that both OSHA and EPA expand their standards to include reactive chemicals and hazards. But more than a decade later, neither agency has acted upon the recommendations. Ammonium nitrate will likely have been included if the EPA had adopted in our 2002 recommendation to include in the list reactive chemicals under its risk management program. And OSHA has not focused extensively on ammonium nitrate storage and hadn't inspected West since 1985. Since the CSB's 2002 study, deadly reactive chemical accidents have continued to occur. On December 19, 2007, an explosion and fire destroyed T2 Laboratories, a small chemical producer in Jacksonville, Florida. The CSB found that the explosion was due to a runaway chemical reaction that took place during production of a gasoline additive. The blast killed four T2 employees and injured 32 others. Buildings more than 1,500 feet away were damaged, and debris from the explosion rocketed up to a mile. One worker was fatally burned, and 14 were injured on January 31, 2006, when a runaway chemical reaction led to a powerful explosion at the Synthron Chemical Manufacturing Facility in Morganton, North Carolina. And 154 people were treated for chemical exposure following a toxic release at MFG Chemical in Dalton, Georgia, on April 12, 2004. As Dr. Moray Arasso testified in the Senate hearing, the CSB believes that it is past time for OSHA and the EPA to regulate reactive chemicals, 
including ammonium nitrate, under their process safety rules. More must be done to assure facilities and communities with these hazards are safe.